So if Donald Trump thought that he was just going to walk into Judge Eileen Cannon's court today and be greeted as a victor with his ridiculous motion to dismiss on the grounds that the special counsel, Jack Smith, was unlawfully appointed and that the appropriations for the special counsel was also unlawful and as a result the whole proceedings are a sham and should be dismissed i think donald trump and his lawyers were in for a bit of a surprise on friday there was a pretty lengthy hearing before judge eileen cannon she opened up her courtroom very strangely to kind of random third parties i mean not necessarily random the citizens united group got to walk on in the court and participate as though they were like involved in the case even though they were a non-party who just submitted an amicus brief another right-wing group and another group that said this entire argument about unlawful appointment is absolutely nuts and you go back to precedent spanning decades with us v nixon independent counsel special counsels like this have been found to be uh, acceptable and there's a whole great deal of, of precedent but it was interesting because judge cannon was very critical of this argument at the oral argument um, that the special counsel was unlawfully appointed yet she entertained it and had this whole full day hearing about it where any other judge based on the precedent and i think and i want to get your take harry Littman, would have at most heard it on the papers but more likely even sua sponte just like rejected the thing and not even entertained it to begin with so i want to bring harry Littman in from talking feds make sure you subscribe to the talking feds youtube channel and the talking feds podcast partnered with the midas touch network a very unusual hearing that it even took place at all but then again when she was there she seemed to do the right thing but should we be applauding her for doing like the bare minimum basic thing was she trying to do that as a way to repair her reputation with the 11th circuit to look good or is this just showing that she's a loose cannon and inexperienced you know maybe it's the broken clock theory ben but it really does yes she was somewhat cogent and aware that the law volumes of it and years of it completely blow this argument out of the water. So what was she doing? The point you just made in passing is a real head scratcher to ask Amiki to come in and present argument. I've literally never heard of it at the district court level. I've never heard of it at any level unless it's the government, even the Supreme Court. They don't have amici just come in and make uh, arguments. And there may be a clue in who these uh, amici were, at least the two on the side of Trump, which they are sort of conservative, um, you know, pillars. Um, and it's certainly consistent with that very interesting story in the New York Times about uh, people trying to get her to get rid of the case early on and her not doing it, that she could have been playing to a you know conservative vanguard in the making should Trump become president. But it, it, was a, it was a case that didn't deserve the time of day, certainly not three extra friends of the court um, there. It has to do with the appointments clause and whether you know the argument is, hey, um, Smith has so much authority, he's actually a principal officer and that requires Senate confirmation. But I mean, this is such, so much water under the bridge. And if you um, think about her other rulings and her general strategy of not making rulings that would subject her to reversal, I mean, this one would be, um, you know, uh, overturned in a, in a skinny minute. So, you know, yeah, she was rational when it came to it. I'm, I've become really jaded on the subject of Aileen Cannon. And to me, it, it, the indication that she actually can read the law sometimes and know it makes her other conduct throughout the case less uh you know the big question incompetence in the tank and to me points more for in the tank anyway no i don't give her credit for actually being you know somewhat cogent when it came to the the hearing it's more like what the hell were we all uh doing there in the first place that's the headline to me
Let me give you this potential an inferior officer, <clears throat> special counsel Jack Smith or someone in that position would generally have to be supervised by the attorney general and the level of supervision is part of a lot of right-wing conspiracies is Merrick Garland, the attorney general, really the puppet master behind all of this. Now, as an inferior They're officer- Joe Biden and even, right? Yeah. And as the inferior officer, it seems sufficient for purposes of the precedent that just simply following the guidelines and regulations of the DOJ suffices to give you that inferior status without having to be micromanaged by the attorney general. But there, throughout this bizarre hearing, there was this one moment where Judge Cannon asked the lawyer for the special counsel's office, um, so what is the involvement in the attorney general Merrick Garland overseeing this? The response was, I'm not trying to avoid the question. It's Department of Justice policy not to answer that type of question, period. So we're not going to answer it. But suffice to say, the appointment of the special counsel here is consistent with the whole body of precedent. So if I was thinking where she was mm. going, I think she wanted to perhaps open this up almost as a quasi discovery, maybe to to kind of harp on that point and push that point. But, you know, my other theory is, is that she wanted to try to come off rational, even though the very presence of Amiki there in the first place and her entertaining this argument um, is very, is very not rational. And then she also kind of sequenced this hearing with the hearing from special counsel Jack Smith to expand the uh, consent, the uh, the terms and conditions rather, of Trump's release to have essentially a gag order from Trump to continue to lie that he's the target of assassination. So she's going to likely not give the DOJ what they want there. or the, so, so maybe she's just trying to sandwich these together and say, look, I did this and I did that. But it, it, the whole thing is very, very odd. Um, I'll let you comment on that theory, but but more more to the point, though, this idea that the uh, chief judge in the Southern District of Florida, like the chief judge, Judge Altanega, she had apparently, based on this New York Times report, told Judge Cannon when this case was assigned back in June, you should not be taking this case recuse get off this case and judge cannon rejected that look how rare is that to not follow the guidance of a senior judge the chief judge giving you that guidance as a new judge the way cannon was it's mind-bending okay so but I'll, I'll quickly uh clean up the other point you made it's really intriguing uh ben because much of what she's done has been to avoid uh, to, to give more information this is really the original sin of the search war and she's you, you know let uh trump which, which has been both um a d delaying and also inappropriate uh kind of discovery on the united states so that is an interesting theory quick point on the gag order is uh if you uh think she's going to deny it that's technically conditions of release. Uh, and the uh, denial of conditions of release is immediately appealable. And now I'm back to the New York Times because a striking aspect of that story is it is everywhere. The Times as much as said so that um, the what she did here in thumbing her nose at the chief judge has gotten all around and it's i think pr produced a lot of tongue wagging and reading between the lines i think you could see that the uh, 11th circuit would love to have the opportunity to bounce her from the case and this could produce it if she actually rules and denies the gag order motion indeed in this case if she doesn't rule on it i think there'd be a kind of uh, possibility of a mandamus saying this is serious we've got emergency situations here look what's going on with bragg in new york but look, look what trump wants to say you've got to actually do something judge and they bring it to the 11th circuit 
But to your question, man, you know, I've been a clerk. I've known a lot of clerks. I've known some judges. It's mind bending. When you're, you become a judge, you leave your whole society behind and your, your group, your colleagues are the other judges on the court. And the closest you come to a boss is the chief judge and any new judge wants to be well thought of by, by their colleagues. That's really what their world um, becomes. And this call from the chief judge, remember, was the second call. First, another judge, and I think we have to assume it was sort of in coordination with the chief judge, gave her a way out saying, it should be in Miami, there's no skiff here, which by the way, there wasn't, and taxpayers have spent millions of dollars, and you know, gave her, gave her a sort of face-saving way out, she, she thumbed her nose, and then the chief judge co comes in and says, look, let's get real. After what you did originally in that misadventure with the search warrant, the optics are terrible. And that's a very forceful thing for uh, to hear from a chief judge and for then to say, I don't care, I'm not um, uh, leaving, or I'm not giving up the case. And by the way, to take all of the case, not give the kind of work you normally would to a magistrate, to me says she's playing in a different game when it comes to advancement and respect. That game is if Donald Trump gets elected, uh, 11th Circuit or even Supreme Court, here I come. And if I, if that means for now, I alienate my colleagues in a way no other district court, new district court judge would do, so be it. I thought it was a really significant and interesting story. The chief judge also is a George W. Bush appointee, right. so yeah. is a, a right wing judge who is the one saying you should not be on this case. And that's why you and I say, you know, a lot of these things are not partisan at all. It's just following the law and doing what you're supposed to do. Our system is built on a lot of good faith and norms. And we're seeing that shattered with people, some of the people who Trump appointed and um, and Trump and, the, and this MAGA movement. Uh, you and I will do more hot takes on this and other topics. Everybody make sure you subscribe right now to Harry Littman's YouTube channel. It's Talking Feds, just search for it. They're on their way to 200,000 and 250,000 subs. Let's help them get there right now. Harry, thank you. Thanks, Ben. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.